An enzyme that may remove the deadly chemical dioxin from the soil, and it's being tested at one of the most uh, worst, con worst known contaminated spots in the country, which is in Times Beach, Missouri. Alan Cox is here with the tales. How exactly does it work? It works by uh, unbinding the uh, chemical dioxin from the parts of the clay in that part of Missouri. The problem with dioxin is it's very long-lasting because it's not soluble in water. It won't dissolve away. That keeps it from getting into the groundwater and contaminating drinking sources, but it m makes it very persistent in the soil. And so uh, the test near a, a trailer park, this is one of 30 sites in Missouri, one of 100 known sites where there's dioxin contamination. Uh, this enzyme, uh, in effect, puts the dioxin into solution, gets it unbound from the clay, and then the bacteria that already exist in the soil can munch away on the dioxin, presumably change it into byproducts that are nowhere near as dangerous. Huh. For all of us who are not chemical experts, how does dioxin get into the soil to begin with? Well, it was a, a very deadly, remember it was uh, the chemical that was used as a defoliant in Vietnam, Agent Orange, and it's uh -huh. also been used as a herbicide and a pesticide in this country. In the case of Times Beach, Missouri, it was uh, spread through uh, oil that was put on uh, dusty roads to keep down the dust. Hmm. Uh, the company that has developed this is called Agro K Corporation. It uh, exists out in Fridley. It's uh, been in business since 1976 looking for applications of enzymes and other biological products in agricultural purposes and also for environmental cleanups of this sort. How does the uh, federal government reacting? We check with an EPA uh, researcher in Cincinnati who has been looking into some of the problems related to the dioxin cleanup. And uh, he said that he wanted to see some more test results. Uh -huh. uh, so far, there have been only limited tests conducted in Missouri by the company. And the EPA says that they've ha heard from several companies who say they have a solution similar to this with enzyme action and that so far those solutions haven't panned out. But uh, the company in Fridley is very hopeful and uh, believing that they uh, will be able to conduct more tests this spring which uh, should uh, possibly uh, have a very much a cheaper solution to the dioxin problem than the EPA has proposed up to this point. Okay, thank you very much. More good news for the economy today. New housing construction soared 15% in January to its highest level in more than five years. And last month's personal income figure posted its sharpest increase since October of 1983, up 1.1%. For all of last year, the personal income of Americans rose 6.3 percent. That is largely due to 4 million people finding jobs. Good for them. It's 5 minutes and 15 seconds past 5. The St. Paul police are still investigating the murder of a shop owner last night. That story is next when the 5 p.m. report continues. Menards, your complete home lighting headquarters, is offering you great savings during our president's sale beautiful and functional ceiling fans, and light fixtures for every room in your home, from wall lamps, reading lamps, and ceiling lights to crystal chandeliers. Can you imagine a beautiful dining room chandelier for only $29.99? Come see the lights at the great President's Sale. It ends Saturday, so by George, don't miss it. big money at Menard. Having a checking account is convenient, but like any convenience, it can be pretty expensive. In fact, with most financial institutions, every time you write a check, it's like money out of your pocket. But not with a checking account from First Federal. With just a $200 minimum balance, you get free checking. So you can write all the checks you want with no service charges. First Federal pays 5.25% interest on checking, and that's definitely money in your pocket. First Federal Savings, the complete financial center. All across the country, AT&T has talked about letting you know what's going on and telephoning. One thing they're not likely to tell you is that MCI can save you up to 30, 40, even 50 percent over them. They also probably won't tell you that MCI offers the most modern national telephone system in the country. And because of that, millions of people are now using MCI. Call MCI and join those millions who get their money's worth from their long-distance phone company. Magazine. Thursday, four of the Hill Street Blues staff take you to the location that inspired the hit series. Check out Icebreaker, a new game being played in local bars designed to bring people together. The moviegoers review Blame It on Rio. First it was Preppies, now it's Yuppies. Bob Sarlat takes a humorous look at the latest social trend and learn how you could win a trip to fabulous Cancun, Mexico on PM Magazine. Thursday night at 6.30 on Channel 4. Last night, the owner of a plumbing store on St. Paul's University Avenue, 51-year-old Dennis Ryan, was shot and killed 
in an apparent robbery attempt. Police are continuing their investigation. Lisa Schrofer has more from our St. Paul newsroom. Lisa, what's the latest as of this afternoon? Well, Ann, Ryan was working in his store yesterday when a gunman came in at about 4.30. Today we have no idea whether there's the police are still investigating at this point. But Ryan handed the money, money pardon me, Ryan handed the man all the money in his cash register yesterday. It was only fifteen dollars. Then, for some reason, no one knows what, the gunman shot Ryan in the chest. He died last night at the hospital. But his wife had been working next door, and she was able to talk to him while he was still alive. As I say, police have no idea why he was shot. Um, it's our understanding that he was active in crime prevention. Is that correct, Lise? That's right. Ryan had been robbed or almost robbed five times in the last three years, and his sons say that he was always active in crime prevention. The store is in one of the higher crime areas in St. Paul, but Ryan grew up in the area, and he preferred to stay there and try to improve it rather than move to a safer location. What he worked with was the University Avenue Development Council, which is most known for its fight against prostitution on the avenue. Did you talk to the family today? Yes, I talked with three of his four sons, and they're all outraged because the shooting seems so needless. They're convinced that the robber must have been an amateur. Any leads, Lisa? At this point, police are still investigating. And uh, you and I were talking a little earlier. Did you say an, a reward is being offered? A reward is being offered by the family. It's still being set up. Anyone with any information can call the plumbing company on University Avenue if they have any leads. The suspect has been described as a young black man, about 5 foot 10. He was wearing a stocking mask. Mm. Thank you very much, Lisa. Don? Doctors at the Unity Medical Center in Fridley are simply amazed at the recovery of an Anoka deputy who's been in a coma for the past several weeks. That follows a serious traffic accident he was in. Debbie Ely is here to explain. She spent some time with uh, both uh, the recovering individual and his fiance today. Yes, they're quite a pair. Uh, Dale Horville, a uh, 27-year-old Dale Horville, was an ordinary guy, a very usual fella until uh, January 14th. He was responding to a domestic call. Uh, he was icy out that morning. He lost control of his vehicle, and the car crashed into another vehicle. Uh, Dale suffered serious head injuries. He, doctors aren't sure whether his injuries now stem from the head injuries or because he, uh, his neck might have been twisted in that accident, causing a, a, loss, a lack of oxygen to his head. Uh, to his brain. Uh, this is his fiance. She's a truly a remarkable woman. His mother uh, along with her and uh, they've been his constant companions all through it. Last week he came out of his coma and uh, began some conversation and throughout his room you see all kinds of signs of, of friendship. Uh, cards, uh, get well balloons, get well messages. Uh, truly a very dedicated group of friends and family. Did they feel at all uh, during the period of time that he was comatose that uh, it might be all over for this uh, this fellow that there was no chance of him coming out of it? Well I think the doctors felt that uh, he might not make it out of the coma but his family remained with him through the entire ordeal. Uh, they stayed with him day and night. In fact they still stay with him and uh, his fiance and mother talked with him. Certainly he didn't comprehend, I'm sure, what they were saying, but they carried on a conversation with him because the, the nurses and the doctors were encouraging them to do so. Coming quite along. Well, it, uh, you can't help but make the comparison, it seems, uh, to the David Mack story, the police officer himself, who was also in a coma for such a long time. Mm -hmm. Interesting story, the advances that they're making in science today. And Thank you. There are several de developments to report out of Lebanon this afternoon. For details, we go now to Skip Losher in our Washington newsroom. Good day, Skip. Hello, Anne. First, the story from Beirut, where President Amin Jamal has made a last-ditch effort to remain in office and to end the bloody battle with Syrian-backed Muslim rebels. Jamal accepted an eight-point peace plan proposed by Saudi Arabia. It calls for negotiations between Lebanon's warring factions, for United Nations troops to replace the multinational peacekeepers, and for the withdrawal of Israeli and Syrian forces from Lebanon. But it cancels last May's withdrawal agreement between Jamal and Israel. Prime Minister Shamir says that Israel will now be forced to keep its security troops in southern Lebanon for a long time to come. But the key to the New Deal is Syrian President Assad, together with Muslim leaders in Lebanon. And we still aren't sure if they'll accept that new plan. We do know that President Reagan and Vice President George Bush met this afternoon to talk about the Lebanese situation, and that Mr. Reagan did approve a Pentagon plan for redeploying U.S. Marines from the Beirut airport to Navy ships offshore. That redeployment, as we are told, is scheduled to be, uh, to be completed within a month. The White House says that Vice President Bush consulted with other members of the multinational peacekeeping force, Britain, France, and Italy, before the president approved that withdrawal plan. And, uh, and the troops are scheduled to begin coming out 
within the next 48 hours. All right. Thank you very much, Skip. Head of the NAACP was in St. Paul today to commemorate the 75th anniversary of that organization. That story next when the Thursday Five continues. It's Blatz. Why is Blatz winning so many taste tests? Quality. A Blatz tradition since 1851. I picked the Blatz over my regular brand. Quality brewing of the finest ingredients, slowly for smoothness, lightness. The Blatz. It tasted better. Test Blatz against your favorite beer and taste quality that stands up to beers that cost more. I would buy Blatz. Blatz. Compare the quality, compare the price. I'd rate Blatz a 10. Over 400,000 Minnesotans have Delta Dental Group coverage, more than twice as many as Delta's closest competitor. Why the difference? Delta simply offers more benefits that really matter to employers and employees. Delta's goal is long-term dental health for more Minnesota people. And it's working. It pays to keep your teeth in good biting condition. Electricity. We use a lot of it all day long. From early in the morning. The volume heavy today, 130. Till late at night. We all use a lot of electricity. So use it wisely. Because it all adds up. This week at Target, we're dropping names and prices. Target's everyday low prices on many name brands just got lower. Like 25% off our entire stock of Revlon and Natural Wonder products. Men's Levi Bootcut Denim Jeans, only $13.99. The Uniden Extendophone Cordless Phone, just $89.99. And Mr. Coffee's 10-Cup Coffee Maker, only $16.99. Name brands you trust at low sale prices, now during the name brand sale at Target. NAACP Chairman Dr. Benjamin Hooks was in the Twin Cities today on this, the 75th anniversary of that organization's founding. Last year, the NAACP was $700,000 in the red, and Hooks told his audience today that he's helping with a massive fundraising program. That's to help meet the group's growing budget demands, and Hooks says that the money drive has to come up with at least $8 million in the next year. Man, that's more than Bud makes in two years. <laughs> oh, three, maybe. Maybe not. You never know. <laughs> so, you know what? The lots of things are appearing in my backyard as uh -oh. if by magic. As the snow recedes, I can find the bird bath. I told you that. I thought that was appearing yesterday in the top of the wheelbarrow, and I noticed some of my fences falling Your old out. shoes that you couldn't oh, find all these months? Gosh, the snow covered up a lot of stuff, a lot of mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's cloudy in the Twin Cities. Our temperature is 40 degrees. Humidity, 76%. Wind is from the northeast at 8 miles an hour. Barometric pressure is 29.92, and the pressure is rising. And very light rain continues in central Minnesota. It's decreased in area and amounts over the last couple of hours. Uh, there were a drizzle at Redwood Falls and Alexandria light rain at St. Cloud. By the time you get up to Grand Forks, uh, you run into a little snow. And we've had reports of some dense fog around Annandale. And there, the storm system moving through the western states, a snowstorm. We've had reports of some heavy snow in the northern part of California, the Cascades of Oregon, and travel advisories through much of that area. Five inches of snow just east of Eureka, California, and six inches at Lake Tahoe. And through the five-state area, thunderstorms in northern Missouri early this afternoon, showers and thunderstorms along the Gulf and to the northeast. And uh, by late afternoon, the precipitation had diminished considerably through the western states, still a little area of rain and snow in southern California. Uh, most of the precipitation here, southeastern Iowa, northern Illinois, still some thunderstorms in eastern Missouri. Showers along the Gulf, there was a half inch of rain at New Orleans today, and showers continue around Cape Cod and New Hampshire. A half inch of rain fell through the afternoon at Boston. The Boston temperature this afternoon was at 48 degrees, and where there was also rain at New Orleans, temperature was 72. A warmest spot today was at Fort Myers, Florida at 79 for the afternoon temperature and an afternoon of sunshine. 19 this afternoon at Alamosa, Colorado. They were at 17 below earlier this morning, and 43 at Boise, and we've had reports, too, of 8 inches of snow just north of Boise. And our forecast uh, for the area for a few showers tonight, and if you'd been along Nicollet Mall today, officially we had five hundredths of an inch of rain, but a little heavier showers, and 
uh, scattered around through the five-state area. That 500s was registered at the weather station out at the airport. Minimum temperature today was 37, and the afternoon high was 41. We'll have sunset tonight at 542, just in case you don't ca catch that, because it's going to be cloudy. Periods of showers tonight, southeast winds, 35 for the minimum. A forecast tomorrow of another cloudy day with periods of showers. Northeast winds, a high of 40, low Friday night of 28. And Saturday, lingering showers mixed with a little light snow and temperature at 38 degrees. I like these rainstorms we've been having in the better, middle of February. Better than the mention of snow. I are we above normal? I mean, yeah, I know yes. we're above normal, yes, but is, we it, are. is the 30-day uh, after... outlook looking the same? Yes, we're, we're thinking that forecast of temperatures is going to be a bit above the normal. For example, our average afternoon temperature now this time of the year is about 25. So huh. we've been... Pretty good shape. Pretty lucky. Yeah. Thanks a lot. The movie Terms of Endearment swept the Oscar nominations today. Details are next when the Thursday Five comes back. Sure, farming is hard work, but it takes a lot of thinking, too. I thought long and hard before I tried new buttrel corn herbicide last year. I found it does more than stop broadleaf weeds. It stops me from worrying about vapor drift and stalk brittleness. When you stop and think about it, it just makes sense to use, Buckdrill. The post-emergent herbicide that does its job and stops. Stop weeds, stop worry. The Buckdrill stops here. In the land of Dairy Queen, we treat you right. The chili dog split. The right kind of hot dog. A plump quarter pound on a golden bun. Covered with cheese, zesty mustard, ketchup, the right kind of tasty chili, onions, tangy relish, the chili dog split. Taste what we mean. In the land of Dairy Queen, we treat you right. Time now to talk about sports. Going to talk about the Olympics. We Gold had one. Medal. The U.S. had uh, one going in. Now they have two. Of course, you probably heard about Bill Johnson. We just received word that Scott Hamilton has also won the oh, golden excellent. figure skating. That's so great. they do have two. And of course, Bill Johnson is uh, like Muhammad Ali or Cassius Clay back when he said, "I am going to do it." He's been boasting all week long, and so. After a week long of boasting, uh, Bill Johnson of Van Nuys, California, backs up his mouth with his skis, racing down the course at 65 miles an hour. That's the fastest downhill speed in Olympic history. Johnson joins Debbie Armstrong of the U.S. in the winner's circle. Armstrong, of course, won the gold in the women's giant slalom on Monday. Johnson said the gold medal win would mean millions of dollars to him and millions of fans. And what would be Johnson's first priority upon winning? First, I'll have to build a trophy room first, I think, to put it in. Uh, and then, uh, you know, after that, then I'll build a house around it. So Bill Johnson becomes the first ever to win a gold medal for the men in the Olympics for the United States. And Scott Hamilton, as we said, wins the gold in the figure skating competition. Two golds today. We'll have more, including a report from Tom Hanneman on the U.S. ski jumping team at six from Sarajevo. St. Paul Johnson High School was the top-rated hockey team in the state going into last night's game against defending state champion Hill Murray. And it was Hill Murray winning that game 5-2 to two at the Fairgrounds Coliseum. But Johnson fans are not too disturbed because of that loss because uh, they are aware of a very key factor in that loss. Keep your eyes peeled on number 12. He is Dewey Wallen of the Johnson Governors. And uh, Wallen is the state's leading goal scorer. He scored the first one for Johnson last night. Wallen uh, has scored 44 goals in 19 games this year. He's a hustling little keg of dynamite. But with Johnson leading 2-1 in the second period, Wallen fell to the ice just as he collided with Hill Murray's Todd Norman, who is number six here. Wallen received a mild concussion, didn't play the rest of the night. Johnson uh, felt uh, the effects of that uh, Wallen absence, went flat, gave up the next four goals. Wallen was taken to the hospital, Don, where uh, it was diagnosed he had a mild concussion. Wallen was back practicing today uh, for Friday's showdown against Harding. So uh, if Johnson wins the tie, they would tie Hill Murray for the city championship, and they have an excellent shot at uh, the, uh, going to the state. I spoke with Johnson principal Fred Brett today. He told me Johnson will be in the state tournament this year, folks. You can take that to the bank. And if Johnson and Hill Murray do get to the state, uh, they would meet in the final game of the first round right here on Channel 4. That's March 8, 9, and 10 on CCO television. That's great. Should well, be a he, good tournament took coming a up. Licking. He did. Just um, happened to be falling at the time that the, the other skater came in. Right, at the time Norman just fell right over him, and uh, it was diagnosed as mild concussion, but as I said, uh, the Johnson team wasn't the same after uh, he was mackerel, out. So you know with that helmet on, he took a pretty good Brad lick. Brad Buto of the Gophers, the Gopher coach was there. Uh, 
Mr. Sertich, the UMD Bulldog coach, was there the, a couple of nights ago. To, so all the scouts are watching this kid play. Wallace, oh, you can see he's got a lot of talent. Be good to see him in the good. state. Great to hear about the gold medal. It is. Excellent. All right, Ann. Thank you. Terms of Endearment and the Right Stuff came out the big winners in today's Oscar nominations in Hollywood. Terms of Endearment got 11 bids while the Right Stuff received eight. Here's a report. If you believe that, you're... For Best Supporting Actress, Cher as Karen Sokwood's friend in Sokwood. Glenn Close, currently a hit in the hit Broadway play The Real Thing for her hit performance in The Big Chill. Amy Irving as the confused beloved in Barbra Streisand's Yentl. Linda Hunt, a woman playing a man in The Year of Living Dangerously. And Alfre Woodard, brilliant in Cross Creek, a little seen movie sure to be better seen for this wonderful performance. But you a woman, and you live by yourself, and don't nobody take advantage of you. I've been watching how you do it. Best Supporting Actor, Rip Torn, also for the little scene, soon to be better seen, Cross Creek. Jack Nicholson for the much and deservedly much nominated Terms of Endearment. John Lithgow, a good and decent banker in the self-same Terms of Endearment. Sam Shepard as test pilot Chuck Yeager in The Right Stuff. And Charles Durning in Mel Brooks' remake of To Be or Not To Be. Josh Schultz. Hey, Hitler. Hi, Hitler. Best Actress, Shirley MacLaine for Terms of Endearment and Deborah Winger for Terms of Endearment. Jane Alexander dealing with the end of her world in Testament. Meryl Streep, last year's winner as Sophie in Sophie's Choice, this year's nominee as Karen Silkwood in Silkwood. And delightful newcomer Julie Walters as Rita in Educating Rita. Little on the door, you want to get it fixed? Uh, yes, yes, I, I, I meant to. Well, that's no good. Is it always meaning to? You want to get on with it because one of these... Best actor, Tom Conti as a roguish poet in Reuben Reuben. Robert Duvall, a country western singer in Tender Mercies. Michael Caine as the man educating Rita in Educating Rita. And a delightful backstage double play for The Dresser. Albert Finney in The Dresser and Tom Courtenay as The Dresser. The lines are fouled. Instruct the puppeteer to renew the strings. I'd have given anything to see the play tonight. Best picture, terms of endearment, but of course, and this year's nomination winner with 11 nominations. The Right Stuff, nomination runner-up with eight nominations. The Dresser has not just two Best Actor nominations, but a Best Picture nomination as well. Tender Mercies, a warm and touching but largely ignored movie until today's nominations. And The Big Chill, a weekend with close friends, sharp-eyed and exuberant. I heard a quiet man, his hand for me, with no sense of pride. But you find... Dennis Cunningham for CBS News. We have a breaking development to report to you. The State Patrol has just taken a body by ambulance away from Highway 10 in Arden Hills. St. Paul investigators working on the Linda Shoebottom case were there. Mike Walsher is also there with a live report for us. Michael? Right, Ann. Within the past few minutes, uh, the body of a young woman, possibly Linda Shoebottom, the, the missing St. Paul woman, has been recovered from that patch of woods behind me. This is westbound 694 near Hamlin Avenue. I'm not sure exactly if we're in Orton Hills. I think we may be in Shoreview here, actually. The body was found back above that small rise in that patch of woods, which is, in effect, the median between the two lanes of 694 east and westbound. The body was recovered, taken away from here about 10 minutes ago. St. Paul Police Highway Patrol and an ambulance were here. They hauled the body out in a bag put it in an ambulance and again took off about 10 minutes ago. Linda Shoebottom, of course, disappeared from her home in St. Paul uh, on last Thanksgiving. She's been missing ever since then. There's been an extensive search for her body. No charges have been filed by the Ramsey County Attorney's Office because they have not had the body of the presumed murder victim, 22-year-old Linda Shoebottom. This development takes on some added importance because just a couple of days ago, the chief suspect in the case, her husband, 34-year-old Rick Shoebottom, was uh, or left himself the Golden Valley Health Center where he'd been staying for the past almost 50 days. And police tonight don't know where he is. He's been gone since uh, a couple of days ago. Okay. Uh, Excuse me, Mike, but just to clarify everything, we have no official confirmation from law enforcement agents that that is no, the body. No, we do not. We understand there will be a news conference by, I presume, St. Paul Police at 9 o'clock tonight on this topic. And as you point out, investigators who have been known to be working the Shoebottom case were here. We might also note that the highway patrolman and the St. Paul Police were extremely upset about having news cameras here and, in fact, threatened to ticket one of our news cameramen when he got his camera out of his car. Mike, I expect we'll hear from more, more from you at 6 and 10. We'll have more at 6 and certainly at 10. Thank you very much. We'll be back to wrap things up in just a moment. Honey, land
Amanda Lakes has come up with a butter idea. You mean better idea? No, I mean a butter idea. They call it Country Morning Bland. They blend 40% Land O'Lakes sweet cream butter with pure corn oil. It really tastes like butter. I told you it was a better idea. Plus, it has the natural lightness of corn oil. That sounds better to me. And it costs less than butter. It's getting butter all the time. I mean better. I mean butter. Country Morning Blend from Land O'Lakes. Come back to Jamaica. Come run on a ribbon of white sand. What's old is what's new. Come, sip Blue Mountain Air. We want you to join us. Come ride our gentle trade winds. We made it for you. Come share our happiness. So make it Jamaica. Come take tea by the sea. Make it your own. Come daydream in a private cove. Make it Jamaica. Come glide through enchanted evenings. Your new island home. Come share the incomparable variety that brought Noel Card home to Jamaica year after year. Come make it Jamaica again and again. Make it Jamaica. We will, of course, on our 6 p.m. report, be monitoring the activity in Shoreview or Arden Hills, where a body was recently removed, and possibly the body of Linda Shubach. I, but I, think I, it was I very came in late on that report, uh, uh, Mike's report. Uh, when did he get out here? When was this discovery made? They're not certain. That Ten it was minutes ago, according to uh, Mike's watch, they had taken a body away, but uh, Anne was proper in pointing out that we don't know for sure. Uh, police do not confirm that that's the body of Linda Shoebottom. It is a body of a woman. But the investigators uh, from the investigation into the shoe bottom disappearance were at that scene. But it does make some sense because uh, there was some speculation. After Mr. Shoebottom, according to uh, eyewitness testimony, had one time stated that uh, the body would turn up when the snow melts. And some investigators were tying his disappearance from the Golden huh. Valley Center with the idea okay. that the snow was beginning to melt and he had to move. But again, he's a suspect and no well, arrest. We'll review that. Also details tonight at 6 on a burning cross that was found this afternoon in Columbia Heights. A Mike Strand will report on a campaign by state Republicans against Minnesota's high income taxes. Now Dan Rather and CBS.